You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, Delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof of your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest. Mary Walters is in the house. Realty Pro 100, welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Just remember, that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team, when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And, of course, we are celebrating today. We celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Trying to do multitasking here today, and it's a lot of fun trying to get everything working properly. Hey, celebrating hmm, National Pack Rat Day. It is what it is. Graduation tassel. Hey, Lee, I saw some graduations actually went through for real this past weekend. So tassel day, walnut day, Idaho day. I I can't say too much about that. But having beaten anorexia, I will stick with cherry cobbler day. We'll go with cherry cobbler. Yeah, cherry cobbler. May, I guess. Isn't it February that we have cherry celebrations? I I don't know. We'll... We'll continue moving right along. Let's see what the market is doing. Dow Jones now down 181 points. The S&P 500 is down 24 and a half points. NASDAQ down 123 points. Do you really want to know what's happening in the oil market? Isn't it fascinating to see what's gone on recently? Just because I, I look at some of these things and you think, is our system so sensitive That a threatened hack, now from what I've been able to glean so far, the hack of the Colonial Pipeline, they said they had the ability to hack them. They said that they wanted $5 million in Bitcoin to stop the hack. Colonial stops the pipeline so they don't get hacked, supposedly. And look what happened to our oil supply in the United States. One pipeline, one attempted hack, and the whole, what, half the country, quarter of the country, is affected. Uh, is somebody watching what's going on here? I, I just wonder if there's maybe there's some issues going on here that maybe somebody needs to be watching a little better. Maybe our infrastructure isn't quite as tight as it should be. Although I do digress. That's not what I was getting ready to talk to you about. But I'm going to give you the oil prices. I will also tell you what it means in the world of gasoline, if you really want to know. Oil's up 77 cents a barrel. 66.12 a barrel. Hasn't been this high in quite a while. I mean, there's gasoline, though, so if you're thinking, if you're looking at those numbers, so gasoline, let's see, at $2.72 a gallon, not in Calizuela. That's a little loud. Oof. Two seventy-two. Yeah, we can't get that here. Three twenty-seven in Alaska, three eighty-five. dollars I think I'll go get gas in Hawaii. Of course, I'm not sure I'm going to get my car there and back, but that's a different story, Three eighty-five. Are you ready for this one? The bad news here, Calizuela. Mary, you don't want to hear this one, do you? I need to go fill up, so I do not (laughs) want to know. Uh, Calizuela, we are at $4.13 a gallon. Yeah, that's not pleasant. 304.5 is the national average. 304 is what the rest of the country is paying. Calizuela, dollar, what is that, a dollar eight more than the rest of the country? Should we look back last year, this time? In Calizuela, we were at $2.80 a gallon. 
The elections have consequences. How are you feeling about Joe now? Let's uh, try, maybe that should be our theme song. How do you feel about Joe? I know, I know. Fake book says that Joe doesn't have anything to do with these things. But then again, you ought to see some of the just jokes that Fake book puts a a warning over. Fact checking jokes now. I wonder what would happen in the day of Johnny Carson if they were fact checking. Now, nah, don't I don't compare myself. I don't even know Johnny Carson. Uh, late ah. night. Late night host. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love having millennials in with me. Mary does a great job with us, but then that makes me feel old. Sorry. <laughs> I, I am old. What am I going to say, right? But uh, yeah, if, I wonder what would happen to fake book with, in the days of Johnny Carson and, and Jay Leno. Jay Leno? Is that one getting any closer? I know the name. Okay. <laughs> We're getting closer. I think I could, like, if you showed me a picture, I could probably say, yeah, that is him. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, now I know what my parents felt like when I, when I used to say all these same things to them. Yeah, okay, moving right along. Let's see what else is going on in the world. So we got uh, the gas prices way up. Fake book telling us the jokes are no have to be fact checked now. Uh, they can't. They don't understand jokes anymore. Police officers can't talk about Black Lives Matter. That's a new one in the in the world today. So that's following that one as well for you. Can you believe getting in trouble because you talk you, you express your opinion? And Prince Harry, I don't know why he's here. Why did he come to the United States? He doesn't like the United States. So he says that the First Amendment is crazy. Now, go back to England. Go back to wherever you came from. Who cares? It's our First Amendment. That's what we believe in. We already fought you guys to, to, to make sure that we had that, uh, that right. Uh, Bernie Sanders, AOC. Now they're, they're upset with the Biden administration over the support of Israel. Unbelievable. Wouldn't you, would you have watched what went on? I mean, under President Trump, we didn't have to worry about all this fighting that's going on, all the bombing that's going on. Under President Biden, uh, Biden doesn't say anything. He pays money. Is it a coincidence that about a month after he gives billions of dollars to the Palestinians that the fighting breaks out again? I wonder, why, I wonder how that could be. Is, is that a coincidence? You think it's something that just happens? Or is it something to do with policy? And then you think about it. And the, the, the lay media, they're not going to tell you this. I am going to share this with you. Because when you, we heard over the weekend that Israel bombed a building that had uh, press in it and some of the Hamas folks. Now, what they don't tell you is unlike the Palestinians and unlike the terrorists of Hamas, well, Israel gave them a warning and said, hey, this building is about to go down. You might want to get out of there. They gave them an hour to get out. Now, if they don't get out, whose fault is that? Is that Israel's fault? Or is that the people that say, you know something, we're just going to stay here? Who else gives an hour's warning in, the, in this type of thing? That just doesn't make sense to me. But, hey, that's the way it is. And the media, they just won't cover that. They won't report those kind of issues. I don't know why they don't want to report it, but maybe it just doesn't fit their narrative should we take a look at this schedule now you know we're here doing a, a, a live radio broadcast here we do these six days a week now so we're contemplating looking at schedules so i wanted i just figured i would look and i don't have it from from friday saturday well wait a second saturday and sunday the president went to delaware so let's look at thursday's schedule okay 40 it was 40 minutes late for his first appointment of the day Hmm, must be pretty busy, right? One ten, he had lunch. Why, who has lunch at one ten? Uh, Forty minutes late. Uh, he didn't say anything. Words were do came out uh, one ten. Strange because have to have lunch. President, and vice president met with a lunch of senators to talk about infrastructure. Now I assume that maybe they ate for I don't know half hour, an hour. That was the last thing on the schedule. So by 2 o'clock, he starts at 1.40, 40 minutes late, and by 2 o'clock, he's done. I like that. Do you have that schedule? I wish. <laughs> it doesn't. I don't, know, I, can, I don't even get that when I go home after I finish working, no less, less the, the work day. Uh, unbelievable. Pipeline is in the news. We're still looking at that one. And uh, maybe, we, maybe they should turn on the other pipeline or turn that back on. Now, if the president had his way, he probably wouldn't care about the colonial pipeline Problem is, that's a private pipeline, so he doesn't have control over that one. The XL pipeline, that's on public land, federal land. So he did have control over that one. 
Maybe that's why he shut that one down so quickly. Uh, moving right along. Hey, who's the favorite president the United States has had in, in recent history? Yeah, China. They seem to be in love with President Biden. They can do whatever they want. So we're watching now. Now some of the infrastructure items that we need coming from China. Do you think the president's going to have anything to say about what went on now that they're getting more and more proof that the virus did come from the lab in China? And China, now it comes out that they shut down all of the Internet, all cell phones, and all roads in a radius around the lab. Hmm, I, wonder, I wonder why nobody is talking about that one anymore either. But I guess we shouldn't say anything negative about China. Gallup poll, 3,700 adults. Now, this was a poll that they wanted to participate, that Gallup didn't call them. So 69% think COVID is getting better in the United States. That's up from 12% in December. Maybe that's because of the vaccine. 86% say they will still wear masks outside now. 86%. Now, obviously, we have different, a different strain of COVID in Calizuela, right? Because the CDC came out and said you don't need masks outside. And in California, we need it until June 15th. Now, I don't know what they're going to find out between now and the 15th of June. But obviously, California must have some different kind of a, a virus than the rest of the country, or at least than what CDC says, because both are saying it's the science. Now, do they have different science in Washington, D.C. than we have out here in Calizuela? I'm just curious about these things. Maybe you can help me with that. You're listening to Ron Segal Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we're going to discuss the monthly market review. Don't forget Budget items in your real estate transaction, and we've got that featured home. Brought to you by my favorite lender.net. All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel, and if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. But the replay is available, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. Well, we'll be back in just a few. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Blue Water Credit Repair is the industry leader in fixing bad credit. Did you know a 40-point increase in your credit score can save you $40,000 on a home loan and $4,000 on a car loan? You deserve good credit and peace of mind. Take the first step today and go to bluewatercredit.com and register for a free consultation from one of their credit repair experts. That's bluewatercredit.com. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at ronismylender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at ronismylender.com. Again, ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. ronismylender.com. Dreaming of your retirement does not include losing your house. However, due to today's lower stock market, higher medical bills, and taxes, many retirees face this very problem. This is why it is necessary that you, as a baby boomer, considering retirement within the next 10 years, understand reverse mortgages and what one could do for you or your parents. A reverse mortgage could make it possible for you or your parents to travel, buy a second home, or start a new business. For more information about reverse mortgages, just call our off-air number at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit realestateradiowithron.com and click the free workshop button. 
Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. And let's see what the markets are doing now. Markets, Dow Jones now down 132 points. NASDAQ down 115 points. The S&P 500 down 24.63. U.S. 10-year Treasury is flat. Mortgage-backed securities are down the bond, down two ticks. But why is all of that happening? Well, no matter what the Fed wants to say, apparently the people are saying what they see, not what the Fed keeps telling them they're supposed to see. That's a problem here because... We kind of know the truth, and the Federal Reserve isn't telling us the truth. So the Consumer Confidence Report comes out, and it's down significantly from where they were anticipating. But the Fed says, don't worry, there's no inflation to worry about. That's coming out of Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic. Right? He was on CNBC this morning, and he doesn't care about the inflation. He says it's not an issue. Huh, well, i got to go buy gas. Looks like it's an issue to me. And when we talk about any kind of food products being prices going up, that sounds like an issue to me. I mean, maybe you you don't care about these things. Obviously, the Fed president doesn't care about it. But when that consumer confidence reading came out on Friday, dropped five points to 83, which is a three-month low, the consumers expressed how they were feeling about inflation and did not think it was a good time to buy many things. Now, if a consumer starts saying, We don't want to buy automobiles. We don't want to. Now, they're saying, according to the the Consumer Confidence Report, they don't want to buy automobiles. They don't want to buy homes. They don't want to buy household items. But the Fed says, hey, don't worry about it. And then the Fed says, well, we're not going to tell you how much we're spending on bonds every day. They used to tell us, remember, they said that they were going to be spending $40 billion a month. And when you look at their reports, they're spending $5 billion a day. Now, I am a simple person, but let's see, if there's 20 working days in a month and you're spending $5 billion, does that come out to 45 times 20? No, I think that's more than that's more than 40. I think that's closer to $100 billion. So what does the Fed do? They say, well, we're going to spend at least $40 billion, and then they stop telling you how much they're spending every month or every day, and they stop telling you what the balance sheet looks like. Uh, can you say, yeah, we're we're lying to you, boys and girls? I, I just throw that out there. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. But that is the what we're seeing from the Federal Reserve. And that is the Mortgage Minute, again, brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. So every time, every month about this time, maybe it's usually usually a little earlier we do it this than this in the month. Mm-hmm. But Mary, come, you got to talk. You can't. No, 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 no. I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> We're harassing Mary. Okay. I know. It's hard to get me to talk. I know. I know. Holy cow. It's, so we, we talk about what the market is doing at this time. So consumer confidence, this isn't even on our charts, but I'm just going to throw it out there because you are on the front lines of real estate. So consumer confidence as of Friday the from the that survey says that people are afraid to buy houses due to inflation. Are you seeing that? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, there is still that group of people who are just sitting here waiting for the crash, waiting for the bubble. They think it's way overinflated. Interesting. Okay, so there's people still out there looking and saying, I'm going to wait. It's We're waiting for 2009 to come back again. Do you think it's going to happen? No. Why? There's, it's still a supply and demand issue. I mean, it's 
it's not the same issue that it was in 2008, 2009. And granted, I was in the market then, but we've talked about it before. That is, I mean, the first class that I sort of saw. Sure. It's old enough to remember. And, you know, looking back at it, it's not the same. Like, it's the supply and demand. When there is this low of supply and demand is so high, prices are going to continue to rise. And those low interest rates are only continuing to drive that demand. Yeah, it's amazing how with the, with the interest rates the way they are, that they've, it's got to it's got to continue. Those people who have been sitting on the sidelines and waiting, and obviously there's there's that whole group of people that are turning 32, mm -hmm. right? That's the magic age that people start looking at, or, or the younger people start saying, okay, I think this is time to start our own household, get out from mom and dad's basement, thank goodness, <laughs> or or whatever they're doing. But that's the kind of the concept right now. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to watch and and see where that goes. Consumer confidence does tell us a bit, but that is a small group of people. So let's continue. Let's take a look at what some of the messages are coming out. Sam Cater from the Freddie Mac. Main driver of housing shortfall has been long-term decline in the construction of single-family homes, resulted in the decrease in supply of entry-level single-family homes or starter homes. It's interesting. Do you, do you, you don't deal a lot in, in new construction, do you? Um, not a lot. I mean, I have done a couple in the past, so... Personally, I would think, yeah, back when like 2008, 2009 happened, all they had so many new construction just sitting there that just sat there sure. after the fact. So it seemed like all the builders did pull back and now they're slowly starting to ramp that back up. But that definitely, you know, didn't help in the shortage supply that we have. Absolutely. They, we, we need those new homes. Single family housing units completed by decades. So look at, just to prove your point, Mary, <laughs> right? So 2000. <laughs> 2000 to 2009, 12.6 million single family units completed in the decade of 2000 to 2009. 2010 to 2019, half. Mm -hmm. Right? So you look at half the amount, and you know, our population isn't shrinking by 50%. Yeah, they really pulled back those new homes. Right? So, and, and, and you don't just start a new home. I, I mean, I've got a family that we're, we're working with. And he went into contract on the new home about a month ago. So we're in May right now. I think it was April. They're telling him his house, and it's not, it's a starter home. It's not a mansion, but it's not going to be ready till October. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're talking about quite a ways. So when you start saying, okay, well, 2010 to 2019, six and a half million units completed. Now that's a bit of a yeah. problem. And what's crazy too is how fast those homes are jumping in price from phase to phase. So I helped someone close on a new home um, back in September of last year. He, he closed and he was so like, I don't know if I want to close in this first phase and the second phase, I might want to wait. I said, you do not want to wait. You need to close now. So he closed and he's so thankful he did because now they're not even done building phase two and the prices have already jumped like about fifty thousand. And what was the what's the price price range that they're at? Um, that so he closed at I believe it was five hundred four. It was up you know in the desert, so okay. not as expensive as Orange County. Now they're going for more like five fifty for the same floor plans. So ten percent in, in a year. Less than a year. Less than a year, and and he's probably knowing knowing new construction. New construction has a lot of expenses that mm -hmm. you have to take care of. Single family or condo? What was single family? So single family generally they do you have to put in his own front yard and backyard? Yep. Well back. Not backyard. Front. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's already spent a good about forty grand upgrading it. And so probably had to put in his own window coverings. Mm -hmm. Right? Because there's, yep. there's a lot of people don't think about all the extra expenses involved in new in a new newly purchased home. Yep. So by the time you do that so he's probably, he's got more money into it, but all those things appreciate too, because if somebody comes into that neighborhood, mm -hmm. they're looking at 550 plus. Yes. And if they want to do any of the upgrades, everything's higher in cost now than it was a year ago. <laughs> yep. Right. So he's, he's probably got a good $7,500,000 in equity. Oh yeah. He tells me all the time. He's so thankful that I made him do the, basically made him do phase one. <laughs> so there you go. So Better, better listen to Mary or else you're going to be in real trouble. Google reported last week that the search question, when is the housing market going to crash, spikes 2,450%. <laughs> I mean, I would love to know that, but <laughs> I don't right. think it's going to be anytime soon. So how yeah. is Google going to know? Yeah, Google's, I mean, everybody's got their own opinion, but my guess is just from supply and demand, right? How would it, what, what's going to cause it to crash, right? I mean, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So the answer there is pretty simple. Uh, not anytime soon. Year over year change in listings. 40% more listings than there was in the last year. 
Mm -hmm. That one there it seems kind of odd to me. Right? Because we don't see as much. The, the property staying on the market is doesn't stay on the market, but how is it? I don't see that many more listings coming on. Same. I mean, it's a little bit more than the past couple of months, but I think a big factor too was there was so few last ah. year and everybody froze last year during the pandemic and didn't okay. know what to do that it made that spread so much different. That would make sense. I mean, if you go from zero to, to, to if you go from one to three, that's about 40%. Yeah. Right. So it's still a small number. So it's not helping anything at all. Inventory levels. Well, they're, they're still way, way down, right? 2020. 1,310,000 units to 900,000 units. That's, that goes right to what you said. Mm -hmm. right? It just proves your point. Mm -hmm. right? There's no inventory to buy, so if there's nothing to buy, what are you going to do? Keep listening to Ron Segal Radio. That's what you got to do. <laughs> You're listening to Ron Segal Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's going on in the current market report. We're going to also chat about that favorite, uh, favorite uh, fe featured home Ooh, easy for me to say. Featured home brought to you by my favorite lender.net and budgeting for closing costs. I wonder what we're talking about there. You can reach me anytime off air number 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you paying rent because you think you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you renting because you don't believe that you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? The Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com, licensed under NMLS 217037. Ron is my lender .com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate below 3.5% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $300,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,300 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L, LendingTeam.com. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed to NMLS ID 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. 
That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. SLT Home Digest 79564. Find that dream home. Don't forget the budget for closing costs. When buying a home, it's important to have a budget and make sure you plan ahead for certain home buying expenses. Saving for a down payment is the main cost that comes to mind for many. But budgeting for the closing costs required to get a mortgage is just as important. What are closing costs? According to Trulia, when you close on a home, a number of fees are due. They typically range from 2 to 5% of the total cost of the home and can include title insurance, origination fees, underwriting fees, doc prep fees, and more, unquote. For example, someone buying a home, $300,000, they could potentially have between $6,000 and $15,000 in closing costs if you're in the market for a home. Above this price range, like anywhere in California, your closing costs could be greater, as mentioned. Closing costs typically between 2 and 5% of the purchase price truly gives more great advice explaining, quote, There'll be lots of paperwork in front of you on closing day and not enough time to read them all. Work closely with a real estate agent, lender, escrow company, all to get the information you need ahead of time. They should be, it's all about education. There should not be surprises when you get to the closing table. If there's a surprise at the closing table, you got a problem because what other surprises? What else have you not been told about? The most important thing to read is the closing disclosure, which shows your loan terms, find closing, final closing costs, any outstanding fees. You should get this three days before closing, since once you sign it, you're going to have some, there's still a little time to change things, but at least you have plenty of time to review it and understand what you're signing. Again, if you have any questions, you should be able to call your lender. It's kind of one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of some of the online services. Are you talking to the same person every month, every every day, I mean, of the transaction for that month? Just throw that out there for you. As home prices are rising, more buyers are finding themselves competing in bidding wars. It's more important than ever to make sure your plan includes budgeting for closing costs. You have to have budget for everything. right? That's what we're talking about on many instances. I do get a lot of people that come call us, and their big question is, okay, well, I've got the down payment. Yeah, but how are you going to get the loan unless you have enough money for the whole, for the whole uh, transaction? You're paying cash. I, I'm not probably going to pay cash for my house, but maybe maybe you have that. Maybe you won the lottery. Maybe you play the lottery. I mean, right now you play the lottery. You can buy whatever house you want, right? Yeah. Holy cow! It's and you gotta know, win it though. You gotta win it. <laughs> yeah, if you play it, it doesn't matter, right? It's it's a matter of winning it. So it's entertainment. I hear all the time, I hear some of the, 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 on the business channel, they say that the lottery is just a tax on lower income earners. My comment is it's just, it's nothing more than entertainment, right? If you go play the lottery because you think you're going to win, you're a fool. Yeah, I don't expect to win. Right? That's why I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something, if, 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 if you go to a movie and you, you pen, I don't know, what, is, what does a movie even cost? I hate movies. $10? I don't know. I've been to a movie in 15... like years. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least a year for sure. Yeah, at least a year. So, I mean, a movie I think is $15 or something like that, right? So it's a little bit of entertainment. You can go and get a lottery ticket for $2. And it's just entertainment. It's not a matter of you're not going to win, right? I mean, somebody will, but likelihood is. And slim. hey, if you do win, just what if you lost your ticket? <laughs> oh yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, and, and what if? Can you imagine? I, I could just picture. I was talking to my wife over the weekend. If I lost the ticket, and then they come and they show on TV my face saying that this is the guy that lost it. Oh man! Did you believe that? I, I couldn't go home for a. For Would life. your wife leave you? <laughs> I don't know. She might be looking to collect on the life insurance policy as opposed to anything else. Oh, well, let's look more at what's going on in the market. Demand remains strong as home buyers are snatching listings quickly off the MLS, and it takes approximately 18 days for a home to go from listing to contract in the current housing market. That's a national number. A year ago, it was 29 days. What are you seeing locally? Um. I mean, that's that's fair, about 18 days. I would say maybe even a less here in Orange County. I mean, the comps I was running for, you know, L.A. County the other day, both of the recent comps, the, the recent listings in that neighborhood, it was five days for both of them. Five days on the market. Five days on the market. Wow. 
That's uh, that's pretty quick now. That's a lot of work for a lot of people to try and get that done mm -hmm. and maximize the sales price. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a a big issue right there. Interesting. When will the U.S. housing inventory grow again? And this is a survey of of, of economists, and this is one of my favorite surveys, Pulsonomics. Why do I like Pulsonomics so much? Well, basically, what Pulsonomics does is they go to 150 of the top economists in the country. And these are people that work for in the education and they work for banks, they work for real estate. So they're all a, a whole cross section. Second half of 2021 is 43% of them are saying that that's when the housing inventory will grow again. I wonder why. First half of 2022, 26%, 12% say the second half of 22, and 9% say 23 or later. I don't think I'm in the same boat as the the group in the the second half of 2021 because where's I don't see that much inventory coming on all at once. Why? Why would it? I mean, I would say the only reason is if interest rates do jump and people realize that demand might be pulling back because interest rates are jumping. So then people try to cash out. Fear of and loss. Say, exactly. And say, okay, well maybe we are at the top of the market. Let's all sell now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that that's the only logical thing thinking in there, right? Top five reasons homeowners pl plan to sell this year. Our home no longer meets our needs. That's a lot of people. We can make a profit in the current market. We want a smaller house, less work. Want to live closer to friends and family. Want to want to live further from close friends. And <laughs> no, no, that's not on there. But we want different features and amenities. We hear all of those. Yeah, right? I mean, that's not just this year. Yeah, that's, that, I think, at any given point in time. Those are reasons. Yeah, the only thing that I think is, is uh, most that I hear a lot now is people are saying they want different features and amenities because of what they've learned in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. From working from home. From working from home. home and staying at home. They don't need to be in the big city. They don't need to, to be in that, you know, have a $2 million, 900-foot house. But they do need an office. But they need, right. So they need, and, and they, they're finding out that they can enjoy life a little better out in the countryside instead of in the, in the concrete. Mm -hmm. That one I have. In the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan of the big cities anyway. Prospective home buyers planning to buy a home in the next 12 months. 16% of American adults are considering the purchase of a home in the next 12 months, according to the National Association of Home Builders. Their housing trends report six points higher than 10% with similar plans a year earlier. Ooh, planning to buy a home in the next 12 months. Uh, I don't know where they come up with that, but I mean, I don't think that there's a whole lot. You know, I think the only thing that I can throw on on that one is it is what it is. <laughs> Average profit for home sellers increased 26%. Now, look at these numbers. This is from Adam Data Research. Sellers, the profit from the home sellers increased 26%. This is a national number. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you say 70,500 from the first quarter of last year to this quarter through this year, the 20, you know, and that was, the, the, you look at the national number, that's what, uh, what's that, 15,000? Something yep. like that? Yep. 15, but then you take that and figure that Orange County, California, the median home price is almost triple mm -hmm. what the, na the national median home price is. So if the numbers pass through the same way, 45,000. 45, that's a lot of money. Well, that, that kind of holds true with what you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. right? The property's gone up a lot, a lot then. What do you do with that money? Well, you have a, you have a great plan, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you I, have, an... I have lots of ideas for that money. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we're not going there. We're talking about real estate yes. still, Mary. We're yes. talking about real estate. So here's the issue, right there. So if you're thinking, if you if that's happened to you and your property's gone up that that kind of an amount, right? So twenty six percent. What that's saying is, if you bought your property and and you did the smart thing, my opinion, and got in with or without mortgage insurance, get in the game either way. Right, so just get in the game. Mm -hmm. But if a 26% appreciation, you already had the, whatever down payment you had, I'm gonna th I'm gonna say, what happens if you take that appreciation and pull it out of the property? I know there's no one from FINRA listening to us because they don't like it when I say this, right? But take that money out of the property and go buy another piece of property. Right? Think about that concept. How does that it, it, you've probably been evangelizing that for a while, only since you've yeah. been on Ron Segal Radio. Yeah, only since then. We talk about <laughs> it a lot. Right? The whole idea is take that money, go buy something else. Yep. Right? So if you buy another piece of property that's another, another, just even in, in California, $500,000 property. That's fair. Right? And you have 50000 to put down. 
That's 10%. If you're moving into it, you can get a loan, an easy loan for, for owner occupied, mm -hmm. right? Keep the, keep the past property and rent that one out. Yep. And now you've, you're on your way. Now you've got two pieces of property appreciating it. Well, this is 26%. We're not going to use that. Mm -hmm. But what if we just use 5%? Yep. Right? So you gotta gonna, going to do a lot, of, a lot of good for your family. Yeah. And historically, real estate will always go up. Right. Oh, and then we got to, we want to uh, uh, quantify that over, over a longer time, longer yes. time period, right? It may go down this year, this month, may go up more next month. So but over a plan to hold for a long period of time, right. that will appreciate value. So the, the concept right there and it, what's brilliant, what Mary's saying right here, right? So how many of us at Mary's age, I'm not going to say what Mary's age is, but how many of us would have said if we only bought another piece of property and kept our first one? Mm -hmm. I know my parents said that. I heard my grandparents say that. I've heard my aunts and uncles all say that. Right? Everyone says the same thing. No one seems to listen. Mm -hmm. Why don't they do that and build that wealth and consider over the next 30, 40, 50 years? Those, I mean, that's obviously long term. Yeah. Right? 30 years, that property is paid off unless you pull money out and do it again. They pick a board game like that, right? <laughs> Monopoly? Anybody? I mean, I used to live in Monopoly. That's probably how I ended up in real estate. There you go. It's a, it's, and you know something? It's, it's an amazing how that game has just lasted over the test of time. But think about it in real life. Play Monopoly for real. And it's a great concept for you. We're going to come back and continue our conversation. We've also got that featured home brought to you by my favorite lender.net, all that and more. You can reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation mortgage adoption plan. You be the judge if it's right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to map at ronsiegelradio.com or call today Ron Siegel 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporation and MLS 217037 and VCAL BRE number 0186-9452. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at ronismylender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at ronismylender.com. Again, ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. ronismylender.com. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. 
reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The featured home segment today being brought to you by my favorite lender.net. Yeah, check out the featured home. We're going to find out who's got that featured home. I think it's going to show up on our screen here any second. And if you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of our social channels, or the ABC News and Talk AM 1490 video feed, you're seeing that right now, 6207 Princeton Street in Chino. Four bedrooms, three full and a half a bathroom. Hmm, College Park at the Commons. One of Chino's finest or best planned communities, it says right here. $699,900. Sandy Rodriguez has the property. Let's take a look at that. If we get some financing options on there, 10% down, 2741 a month. 20% down, 2437 a month. 25% down. You got to do it strategically. And you're looking at 2143 a month. And those for those of you keeping score. 3.473 APR, 3.307 APR, and a 2.967 APR NMLS, 217037. Let's see, a featured home. I like that one. That's a pretty nice looking property if you're if you're watching that on the screen. If you want more information about it, give me a call, 800 306 1990 800 306 1990. Continuing our conversation, Mary Walters, Realty Pro 100 is in the house. We are chatting. A bit about the monthly market report. We do that every month, and we look at it from both an old man's perspective and from a younger person's perspective. So Mary brings, you can obviously tell who's bringing the, the younger person's perspective, right? It's not too tough. Not a bubble. It's a supply. It's a supply, simply a lack of supply, according to Lawrence Yoon. That's probably got to be the one of the greatest uh, uh, well, surprises I've ever heard, right? Surprise! Surprise! surprise. <laughs> yeah, we're really surprised about that one. Yeah, we we couldn't couldn't imagine that it's a, just a, a interesting information. So let's look at the one of the things we should always talk about, and one of the things that I, I, I constantly want you to be aware of. If you're if you've bought a home and you're one of those, if you own a home and you're one of those folks that did have a hardship. I am only talking to those that have had a hardship, not to those that like to do some of this strategic garbage that just hurts our economy, hurts our country. But if you have a legitimate hardship, that's what the safety nets are for. And there are still opportunities to get that forbearance from the, the government if it's a government-sponsored entity is that has the, the mortgage on your property. If it's a portfolio loan that doesn't count because the portfolio companies get to do, make their own rules, but the government-sponsored entities, there is still great information available. So we want you to make sure, give us a call at 800-306-1990. If you are one of those people that are having trouble, legitimately, we don't help in the strategic portion of it. Number of mortgages and active forbearance unchanged for the last three weeks. So we want to see see that start to go down. It did come down quite a bit. Right, so we're we're watching that chart going the, the, in the right direction. I think that's interesting too because we've heard a lot of people say that they're just waiting for all these foreclosures to come on the market and everything. And we've talked before about a lot of people took out the forbearance in fear, right? Not that they needed it, but fear that they might actually need it. So it seems like the majority of people who did that have come out of forbearance. So I'm right. wondering if that unchanged number for the last three weeks. Those are the ones that we're, we should be worried about turning into foreclosures now. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because there, the, there, there were there were a lot of people that, and we've talked about this many times, is there were a lot of people that just didn't know what we didn't know what we didn't know. Exactly. Right? So you go and you take you, you do the forbearance just to as a safety net or but precaution. But they still kept making their payments. Right. And that's a, and that's to me that's prudent, mm-hmm. right? Because we didn't know. Yeah. Right. So now they've come out of the forbearance. Just so you know that you've got to be out of forbearance if you want to refinance your home, right? If so, if you if you haven't done that already and taken advantage of the low interest rates, who's going to lend money to somebody that says I can't make the payments? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. 
Four hundred thousand mortgages left forbearance in the last two months. That just goes to uh, document exactly what Mary just said that the people have started taking care of that. Upon exit from forbearance plan, forty-seven point three percent were paid in full. Thirty-six and a half percent worked out a repayment plan. Sixteen point two percent still in trouble. Yep. Right. So there's still a bunch of people now. Now, if you're one of those sixteen point two, give me a call at 800-306-1990. Don't lose your equity. Right there, there's solutions out there. If you're still in trouble, give me a call. Our team will be more than happy to help you with putting together a plan for some sort of a resolution. That's what we're here for. There's, you could call anybody, and and we've got a whole team of people. The folks at Realty Pro 100, they're more than happy to help you. Right, if you want to, if you need to get out of your current residence and not lose your equity, right, put together a plan. It's it's all about the game plan. And get, get getting back on track. Upon leaving forbearance, borrowers paid in full. So we just talked about that. And again, we'll put these some of these slides or screens up on this on the uh, website for you. I think the math speaks for itself. How well the forbearance program worked. It's one of the few times, yeah, in my career that I've seen a government initiated program adopted as well and executed as well by the industry as one. That's Rick Shargat, e, executive vice president of Realty Track. But that's pretty true. I mean, especially when you come up with a program that quickly. So the program worked well. It was not smart what our governor did when he came out and said that everybody should just not make a mortgage payment if you, because they're not going to get foreclosed upon. That wasn't prudent. But having this plan as a safety net yes. made a lot of sense. Consumers more upbeat about their income prospects. Last month, and many appear eager to spend. They sur the survey found 8.9% of Americans plan to buy a home in the next six months. The biggest share in, in records going back to 1978. 8.9%. That's a lot of people. It is. And but, it's in the earlier slides, it's 16% in the next 12 months. Yeah. So it's where are they going to get all these houses? <laughs> but, but you know something? Kind of proves what we've been talking about, Mary. Mm -hmm. Right? So if there's this many people out there that are going to go and buy a house, and we don't have a lot of people that are have are putting their houses up for sale. Mm -hmm. That means prices have to keep going up. It's only going to drive those prices up more. And what about the bubble? <laughs> what about it? <laughs> exactly. Interest rates, they're still down. Freddie Mac is still showing us at sub 3%. Now, remember when you see these sub 3%, that means you still have to pay. I think last week's number was uh, paying 7 tenths of a percent to get it. Right, so you're still paying a little bit of money to get the rate, and I'll tell you exactly what last week's number was, if I can find my notes. 2.94 was the May 13th reporting. I had to pay seven tenths to get that. Compared that to 3.28 last year, 2.96. So it ticked down just a little bit last week. We'll see what happens on Thursday when this week's numbers come out. But it's still, I mean, who cares really when you think about it? Right, we got down to 2.8. I don't know, seven, somewhere in there, two and a half. Mm -hmm. And now it's so at 2.9. Very, very cheap money. Yes. Right? I mean, that's the bottom line there. And, and most of the institutions are still saying it's going to go up. Right? I mean. <laughs> well, how much lower can it really get? Right. I mean, and when, you know, some of you bring up a good point there, Mary, because the concept is, is where's the risk? is it, or, or where's the likelihood? It can't go too much lower. Mm-hmm. But it could go a long way higher if inflation yes. stays around. So take action right now is the bottom line. Everyone's predicting, most of the major companies are predicting that it's going to go up. But home prices. So what are we expecting for home prices? And we look at MBA, Fannie Mae, Ivy Zellman, Freddie Mac, National Association of Realtors, Realtor.com, CoreLogic. Where's CoreLogic at? I mean, they keep coming up with these low numbers. <laughs> And I think <laughs> they always adjust though and get they're like, oh yeah, right before you know they yeah. always end up moving it up. They were the only one that came out and said it what last year this time was negative six point six percent on real estate. Yeah, they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> right? Six point eight percent is the average of all the forecasts. Kind of again ties in with exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Supply and demand, it's pretty basic. Yep. Not a not a whole lot of world. New home sales forecast to increase. Again, that's a tough number for me to understand. Where's the property coming from? Yeah. Right? I mean, you're not seeing a lot of new ones coming on. More so than in the last couple months, but not like a huge increase. Enough to cover another 7% of the people wanting to buy? Eh, <laughs> it's going to be tough. Yeah. Perception is strong and, and sight weak. In strategy, it's important to see distant things as if they were close and to take a distant 
view of close things. Miyamoto Musashi. I don't even know who that is. A legendary swordsman. Okay. Moving right along. Average days on the market in California. Well, 15 to 30 days. I wonder where that... that it's got to be some of the outskirts, right? Some of those weird outliers. Yeah, because I don't... You, you said how many... What was the days we talked about earlier? It was like five or six days those on the market. Those were the comps I was running last weekend, yet. Yeah. Five or six days on the market. So if you're thinking about selling, it's going to happen pretty quick. So don't put your house on the market if you're not ready to move. If you need help, well, we've even got a source right now that if you sell your house and haven't found your acquisition property, or maybe you want to go buy something before you sell your house, you can go buy right now. They'll pay for it for you, charge you 3%. And then you can go and sell your house. And Mary just told you, you can sell it pretty quick. That's the concept, right? Yep. A lot of, a lot of ways of taking care of these things. And as always, I ask you, Set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Big thanks to John and Sean for engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Segal Radio.